Hello, thank you for having me. Um, I hope I get through everything. Uh, ninjas, I thought I'd start with ninjas, because um, they're amazing. Um, I think that ninjas were my first introduction to Japan. My brother and I used to have full ninja outfits, and we'd jump off the roofs and swords. And, but um, I think as a young, as a young uh, whippersnapper, that was probably really my first kind of cultural appreciation of what Japanese uh, Japan was, pardon me. And uh, to this day, I still love ninjas. They're pretty good. Um, obviously, origami. I'm a paper engineer, and paper is my true passion. And I do a lot of teaching uh, in my career, and origami is always a great place to start when you're teaching people paper. It's a simple, but it's complex, and you have to fold neatly. You have to really pay attention to what you're doing. Um, I think, you know, when it comes to Japan and you think about paper, I think as a Westerner, we only really have to scratch the surface to see what a profound and, and deep uh, cultural attachment Japan has to paper. And so for me, it's, it's probably one of my favorite countries in the world, and, and I love going there. I think I've been there about six times now. But um, yes, it's, it's always a, a, a really uh, interesting place for me to be. Um, this is some of my work. I just thought I'd show a couple of slides of my work as we go through. Um, I've been working with paper for eight years now. I work with pop-ups. I do packaging, sculpture, illustration, all different kinds of things with paper. And um, anything and everything out of paper I love. It's, um, it's truly a passion, and uh, I love working really hard at it. So um, I get lots of joy out of doing this kind of stuff. Watashi wa Nihongo I'm actually currently studying Japanese at the Japan Foundation. And um, I love Japanese. I mean, it's such an interesting language. I speak French and a bit of Swedish, but Japanese is a complete brain bender. And I love the, the, the characters and just the way the structure of the language. It makes no sense yet, but <laughs> I'm sure it will eventually <laughs> if I keep on going. Um, I love the, the, the cultural friction of Japan. The, here's a lady wearing a kimono on the um, Shinkansen and some scantily clad babes at the robot restaurant in Shinjuku. And, uh, you know, the, the, the friction there, the, it, it's really fascinating, I think, as a Westerner to come and, and see that friction. Um, it always is very inspirational. I find Japan a uniquely inspirational country. Um, a retro super future. I love, you know, we can't argue that Japan is probably, you know, one of the most technologically advanced nations in the world. We only need to think about the toilets to understand that. But I love how they frame their technology with a kind of like 70s, 80s bent. And these are these bikes in Japan, which I absolutely love, Ma uh, Yamaha Maxims. But I, I love that kind of, um, I don't know, retro kind of feel to their technology. Um, commitment, to, commitment to excellence and an eye for detail. Um, here is a chrysanthemum display in Shinjuku Goen, which I saw a couple of years ago. And this, this yellow one is just one plant. But I, I love that kind of real uh, attention to detail and, you know, the, the focus of getting something really perfect, which I try and bring in, in, in my work as well. Um, I, my friend took me to her bonsai master a couple of years ago and I bought one of these pots and he wrapped the pot up in the most beautiful um, way, you know, he just used paper and red twine but just his kind of attention to the way he wrapped the pot was such a revelation to me. The fact that something so mundane could be, you know, imbued with such a sense of, of um, focus and beauty. Uh, this is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in the world and it's a, it's a shaving of a block of wood and it's a menu in a restaurant in Kyoto and they kind of just wrote the kanji, you know, it's just beautiful and it, it really expresses to me that kind of notion of less is more in Japanese culture which is a tenet of design that I hold true and dear in my work practice. Um, Tokujin Yoshioka, probably my favorite Japanese um, creative. And he, you know, he really imbues his work with this sense of less is more. This, this idea of, this a supremely complex idea, but like kind of really bringing it down to kind of, I don't know, the, the, the bare bones of something. And then you get this kind of amazing friction and beauty there, which I absolutely love. <clears throat> um, this is a project I did with Greg Anderson from Trigger Design, who's here tonight. And we created a, a um, uh, a cover for Shigeru Ban, who's a Japanese architect, the paper architect, and uh, he's known as, and he was pitching to build a building here in Sydney, but we tried to bring in this notion of less is more, and we kind of created this woven paper cover um, for his report. He didn't win the building, but <laughs> anyway, that's all right. Uh, Tadao Ando, another uh, favorite uh, uh, architect of mine. I recently was in Naoshima, which is probably one of the most amazing days of my life, with my French friend Mathilde Nive, who's a paper guru too. And uh, uh, ubiquitous Yaoyoi Kusama shot there. But these buildings, you know, they when you can see them in, in books, but when you're actually there in them, they, they, it does something to your head, which is, you know, quite incredible, really. Uh, Ken Yahara, another one of my favorite designers, uh, and he wrote this beautiful little book called um, On White. Shido, this is the kanji for shido, uh, for white in Japanese. And I love in Japan how, you know, they um, imbue their, their colors, but, you know, you can write a whole book on just white, which, you know, for me is a total inspiration. And, and paper, obviously, this is a, a series of work I did last year, which is um, woven tapestries of geometry and using no glue and encased in, in perspex. And, you know, I kind of tried to bring that Japanese sensibility in. 
and using just white and you know just texture. Um, I, what I love about when I go to a city like Tokyo is is the the texture of the city. It is a fabulously textured place, um, and um, you know as someone was saying earlier, you know there's this sense of serenity there, but really it's quite a chaotic place full of kind of pattern and geometry and I mean it's a total inspiration to me every time I go there I, I my mind goes crazy and I just absolutely love it <clears throat> the crows in Tokyo I don't know did you know that <laughs> did you know that the crows they're waging war on the crows in Tokyo but they're, they're, they're massive birds and they're kind of attacking everyone and eating the rubbish but um they're, they're beautiful birds and, and they they kind of imbue the city with this kind of eerie gothicness which I, I I always forget when I'm when I leave and I come back and I'm like ah oh, the crows but yeah I mean they're amazing. <laughs> uh, Lion Cafe, one of my favourite places in, in Tokyo, um, uh, tucked away in the Love Hotel district of uh, Shibuya. And uh, it's this really weird old cafe where everyone has to sit facing the same direction. You're not allowed to talk and they play like Chopin and Shostakovich on these like two storey high um, uh, speakers. It's amazing. You must go there. Lion. Lion Cafe. And obviously the Takio Paper Showroom, which is kind of uh, my heaven. Um, it's in Jimbocho, and uh, all the walls are lined with drawers, and you can kind of pick whichever paper. Japanese paper is the best that I've used. Uh, it's got a crispness, and a f it folds amazingly well. But that's hardly surprising, really. <laughs> um, yeah, so I always go there. And my final slide is my friends, my Japanese friends. Uh, um, Yoshinobu Miyamoto, who is a... Um, uh, fabulously talented uh, paper, he's an architect really, and uh, Devil Robots, Shin Koto, who I met recently at a um, design talk in Manila. And I think the, that's really the, probably the most interesting aspect about me if you're going to Japan. I love friends and, and sharing in, insights and so, you know, that's what I always look forward to when I go back. So, anyway, I think I'm the last speaker. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you had a good time.